Up in the ring, Boyd Pierce is ready to bring this event to you, so let's pick up our ring announcer. Your main event of the evening, two out of three falls with a one hour time limit. In the blue corner, Playboy Gary Hart presents from Buffalo, New York, the maniac, Mark Lewis. Then across the ring, Yokohama, Japan at 245 pounds, J.J. Dillon presents Professor Tanaka. Your referee, Bronco Lewis. Two out of three falls, one hour time limit. So now, with two out of three falls ahead of us, we are faced with the phenomenon of having two managers each with the man whom they believe to be the, the ultimate champion, each of them particularly protective of their charges, each of them jealous of the other, but that is only on the outside of the ring. On the inside of the ring, we've got maniac Mark Lewin and Toro Tanaka, and it would be hard to find in any day's journey two guys who are tougher in different aspects of the wrestling world. I think that Mark Lewin probably knows more American style wrestling than Taro Tanaka does. And Mark Lewin has a good background in the Oriental arts. Then in the other corner, Tanaka is, is particularly good at the Oriental arts, but he is also pretty good at American style wrestling. When I say pretty good, I'm not trying to belittle them. I'm trying to uh, just weigh the different uh, talents of the two individuals. Tanaka with his salt ceremony or a variation of the ceremony that precedes sumo matches in Japan. But many Japanese take um, the opportunity in all matches to spread salt. On the outside of the ring, we have Gary Hart and James J. Dillon exchanging glances as Hart follows Dillon around. There you see them walking right behind us and surveying each other. Dillon here to my left and Gary Hart closest now to Tanaka. Hart looking resplendent in his Brooks Brothers gray pinstripe. And Dylan here has already been to the ring twice tonight, once with Hito and once with Sakurada. And Mark Lewin is getting advice from Mark Lewin, and Lewin is telling Hart to sit down. Now there has been a lot of controversy going on between Gary Hart and maniac Mark Lewin. Mark Lewin has had a taste of handling some of his own business affairs and doing his own thinking in the ring and he now has taken a position that he can, wants to prove that he can live without Gary Hart. Whether Gary Hart can live without Mark Lewin is still a moot point. So Tanaka and Tanaka chopped at that turnbuckle, it hit solidly, but that hand of his is protected by a thickness of callus right along the outer ridge. Now the fans are getting behind Mark Lewin or are they trying to rattle Mark Lewin? But you hear that dog-like barking going on all over the ring and the, the barking is an indication to, of Mark Lewin's style. It's the way he lets off tension. It's the way he breathes, frankly. The head buried in the solar plexus, the hands behind doing the pulling, and that bullet-like head could slow up and stop Mark Lewin. But now Gary Hart walks along the Coliseum floor following James J. Dillon and Gary, Gary Hart is upbraiding Mark Lewin, because he almost got hit with a falling body that time. The body of Toru Tanaka. 
So it's a, again a bear hug, again a head buried in the midsection of Mark Lewin, and Lewin found the answer. That driving knee coming up there did it. Arm lock, standing arm lock, often known as the Japanese arm lock. In this case, it would be a Japanese arm lock under any circumstances because Tanaka is applying it. The professor now, boring in close to Mark Lewin. And now we've got James J. Dillon on the outside arousing the wrath of Mark Lewin and Gary Hart telling, just trying to listen to their conversation. He was just telling maniac Mark Lewin to pay attention to the man in the ring. He'd take care of the guy on the outside. At least that was the gist of the portion that I heard. The chop on the shoulder. And Lewin right now giving Professor Toro Tanaka a taste of the mixture of styles, the chop borrowed from Oriental Wrestling and the arm block borrowed from our own style. Surfboard hold, we call it. Double arm lock, some people call it. And the powerful arms of Tanaka. And Tanaka is a powerfully built individual, solid right down into his well-bandaged ankles. And now the Hart is up there raising sand with um, referee Bronco Lubitsch and claims that um, Tanaka actually capitulated but did it in Japanese. Here is Tanaka's attack as Dylan and Hart carry on a verbal war on the outside. Mark Lewin is caught in a rip on his trapezius muscles that arm of his bounces and waves around and he is trying to work his way up to his feet so that Tanaka will be unable to get full pressure. Gary Hart reaching out with his arms not in supplication surely but reaching out with his arms to contact Mark Lewin. Lewin did not take the bait. He did not succumb. Now we've got Dylan around on Hart's territory. A little bit to the right with that camera. Hart is arguing with uh, James J. Dillon. Hart. Hand outstretched to Maniac Mark Lewin and Lewin turns him down. He did not accept that outstretched hand, which might have enabled him to pull his way over to s safety. You know, we're speaking of powerful physiques. Maniac Mark Lewin is one man who takes care of his body, who spends countless hours in the gym and is never out of shape. But right now, he is liable to run out of oxygen in the brain and pass out. The crowd is partly divided between watching the uh, byplay on the outside, the exchange of words between Hart and Dylan. They're, now they're on opposite sides of the ring, so there will be little of that. And as Maniac took what Tanaka had to offer, you see him on top now, and he could get a fall. He's got a fall. Maniac Mark Lewin bounces in there with the solidness of his 245 pounds into the midsection of Toro Tanaka. He has scored the first fall in this two out of three fall match. And Gary Hart raises his hand as much as to say, we have scored a fall. Always with managers, it is we or I. But in this particular case, Lewin won the fall. We'll be back here in a moment, right after we have this word from the studio. The bell has not yet sounded for the second fall of this event, but Maniac Mark Lewin is a fall ahead. Referee Branko Lubitsch has 
gotten J Jim Dillon out of the ring, and Gary Hart has not yet gotten out, but right now he is stretching his luck because by staying in there, he came across one of those frequent arguments that have sprouted between he and Gary Hart. Hey! Get Maniac Mark Lewin, first drop kick I have seen him throw in a long time. <laughs> but again, he comes up with an educated pair of feet and he is setting Toru Tanaka up for destruction. They are on the floor right here alongside of us and Salt bounces all over the place as Tanaka hits the um, ring apron. Jim Dillon made a hasty retreat in front of, uh, of Lewin, but Lewin right now pursues him to carry the action into the ringside and again he misses with that powerful chop and you hear that hand hit this canvas and you know things are going on. James J. Dillon coming after Maniac Mark Lewin ripped across his face and his eyes and now we've got Tanaka coming back to, to it and the action now has included the pair of managers. Here's Tanaka in the commanding position as he takes over on Lewin to chop away at him. But Dylan again, like a vulture on the outside of that ring, takes over on Lewin the moment he feels that Lewin is not in a position to retaliate. And, but right now, Lewin has his heart set on retaliation, and you see him chasing Jim Dillon, and he catches him. So we've got Tanaka, we've got Dillon, and Dillon into the ring post and down. Oh, how he slammed into that post. His head collided with it, and Lewin is back again, and he has chased Gary Hart away. And Dillon is bleeding. He hit this ring post with his head, and Mark Lewin is determined now to introduce him to the post again. We've got Dylan outside, but he's gonna be inside shortly as Lewin paid no attention to Tanaka. He caught the bonsai bayonet in the throat and was blasted and dropped to the canvas. So here we have the rare spectacle of one manager bending over the wrestler and shouting at him, and in the other corner, the wrestler bending over the manager and trying to revive him. But James J. Dillon is... bleeding in the corner here. His head is bleeding from that blast into the... There he is, stretched out. He got a bad cut, and the second is opening up his shirt. Now the fans are getting behind Lewin. But you see Lewin, he's determined to turn his attention to to James J. Dillon, and Dillon is in the ring. There, there is not, no fall has been called yet, or rather no bell is rung yet to start this second fall. And so Dillon's being in the ring, his shirt is covered with blood, his suit is covered with blood, and his head is covered with blood as he kneels down here. And here we've got Mark Lewin is Taking Gary Hart apart. Well, I'll be darned. Oh, here is the blasting temper of Maniac Mark Lewin as he pounds away at Gary Hart. Hart in the in, in the in the corner and Gary Hart. He's got him right by the tie. He's got him right by the tie. Gary Hart! I don't want you anymore! I can't hear what he's saying. He's shouting something to, to Gary Hart. He's got Hart backed up against no! him, pulling him by the necktie. I want you to and fire me! 
I want you to fire me now. He said, say it. Gary Hart is being asked whether, being told to tell these people that he has no, nothing more to I do with me. All right, don't ever stand in my corner again. And Lewin comes around to use Gary Hart as a punching bag. James J. Dillon is down and just about out, and here, Gino Hernandez has driven down into the into the ring. We've got the ring full of people. Oh, and Gino missed a drop kick and hit Toro Tanaka. And Lewin is on top. And there is a three count. And the three gives it to Maniac Mark Lewin in two out of three falls. And there is Tanaka through the ropes. Here is James J. Dillon getting it as Maniac Mark Lewin turns in what has to be the crowd-pleasing performance of the year, and Jim Dillon, his legs going out from under him, falls to that canvas, and there is the winner, Maniac Mark Law. What a tremendous and explosive end to the partnership between, between Gary Hart and Maniac Mark Lewin. There is the winner, and this crowd is in a frenzy as they, they cheer for maniac Mark Lewin. Mark Lewin being the object of the affection of these fans and a tremendous and explosive victory. Victory it was because he's the man who had his hand raised, but Lewin now has ended a tormentous, association with Gary Hart and in a manner that leaves no doubt about his intentions. We'll be back here in a moment, right after we have this. They're having the word first. Mark Lewin with all of his fans, and look at that, I'll be darned. Maniac Mark Lewin, perhaps a maniac no more, but he's a winner. We'll be back here in a moment after this word from the studio.